Good morning, everyone. I hope some of you will join me live today and let me know if you can hear me okay. I am going to be doing the review of the digestive system, and it's just getting uh, more and more exciting each time that I do one of these systems because I'm feeling more comfortable in front of live audience and knowing that it's going to be out there for a while for you guys to be able to see it. And I hope that uh, this is serving you, that it's helping you. There's so much to the digestive system, you know, that I, I, I really get excited with the digestive system because from what I was taught from one of my spiritual teachers is that, you know, disease and illness begins in the gut. So it's one of the most important systems that I get really excited about. So if anybody's on, please just let me know. I want to say hello, welcome. And I want to know if you guys can hear me. Please let me know. I see some of you already on. So let me know if you can hear me, guys. Let me know. Say hello. I want to say hello. Take a couple of minutes. Not too long because then people want to just jump. Hello from Korea. Well, Muse is music. Chanda Jenkins, nail instructor. Hi. How are you? Welcome. So glad you're here. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, you can hear me. Obviously, you can hear me, right? <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for being here. So we're going to be starting the digestive system. North Carolina, Ch Shonda, Shonda Jenkins, Tisha, Namaste from Belize. Namaste. <laughs> Welcome. And listen, by the way, if some of you have not subscribed to my uh, YouTube channel, please subscribe. That really supports me and helps me out during this time. I'm trying to still continue to grow my channel, even though we have not been able to do any videos because of this lockdown. And you can also follow me on Instagram, uh, Massage Therapeutics 915 on Instagram. Massage Therapeutics 915 on Instagram. You can check out my store at massagetherapeutics915.com. And please subscribe to my YouTube. I appreciate your support, guys. It means a lot to me, really. So let's jump right on in to the uh, digestive system. I'm going to be obviously naming the uh, anatomy, the physiology, discuss some of the different layers, and maybe even go a little bit into more detail with the you know, with the small intestine and the large intestine, and also describe the accessory organs that help the digestive system. So the digestive system uh, takes food in and it processes it. It really just breaks it down, you know, and it's a disassembly line. It's like if you eat that apple or you ate an apple for breakfast, you know, it's a nice, nice, shiny red apple, like the one I have here. <laughs> You know, it's a nice apple, but then it has to take it apart. You know, it has to disassemble the apple to be able to get all its nutrients out. So and it does require quite a bit of energy for digestion. It produces more than it requires. So that's a good thing, but it does take a lot of um, energy. Thus, thus the reason that it's the stimulate, stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system. Remember, parasympathetic nervous system is your rest and digest. So digestion happens when, you know, when you're under parasympathetic system. So this is why I always tell my students, you know, don't eat when you're having an argument. Don't have heavy discussions, you know, because it does, it will stop digestion or, or disrupt digestion. So gastroenterology, remember ology means study of, so it's the study of the gastroenterology, um, the digestive system study. The anatomy are the parts, what parts are, you know, for the digestive system. And some of them, is, it's got a little bit confusing sometimes when I teach the respiratory system, because they go, why is it, I thought the trachea was part of the digestive system, but the trachea is part of the um, respiratory system. So the anatomy is the oral cavity, and that would be your mouth, you know, with your tongue and your teeth and the glands, you know, the salivary glands. And we have three major, you know, salivary glands, and the parotid gland is the largest one right here by the mandible. So when you're working on somebody, you know, be very careful because it does lie over the masseter muscle. 
So be very careful not to press, you know, too much of, on that. Another uh, part of the um, anatomy is the pharynx, the esophagus, the stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and obviously some of the accessory organs. And accessory organs means that it helps. It helps with digest. It aids with digestion. So let's talk about the physiology. Ingestion is the process of taking food into your mouth. You're ingesting it. Okay, so that's ingestion. Digestion means you break it down. So digestion is already taking all the, you know, the molecules apart into smaller molecules so that it can be reabsorbed into your body to feed and take nutrients all around your body. Secretion is it's cell secrete mucus and uh, digestive enzymes. So secretion is one of them. Absorption is the molecules move into the bloodstream and the lymph vessels and then it carries it through your you know through your whole system through the blood so that's absorption defecation is undigestible food that needs to be eliminated and i think we all know what that means and don't freak out that i like to talk about it because i think it's so important to talk about about it so uh, the, the, it, the gastrointestinal tract is a muscular tube from mouth to, you know where, <laughs> I, I don't want to say too many things. So I don't want YouTube to cut me off. <laughs> so it, uh, has the accessory and, uh, glands like the salivary glands, the pancreas, the pancreas is part of the endocrine system too. It's an, an endocrine gland. So it serves, it's the only gland of the endocrine gland that serves as exocrine and you know an endo endocrine gland but i'll tell you a little bit more about that so and then you have your liver and your gallbladder so there's uh, several layers remember that the intestinal tract is smooth muscle okay just like your biceps it's smooth muscle it works it's got peristaltic action to move all that food down you know the way it's supposed to so the innermost layer, layer is the mucosa layer, which is mucous membrane. And then the submucosa, sub means, you know, under, and it contains loose connective tissue and blood, lymph, and nerves, and the glands. And then the muscle, the smooth muscle, which is, oh, I erase it, that peristaltic mixing propulsion movements. It squeezes, it squeezes to push the, the food down. And then the serosa, which extends and attaches to the peritoneum. And the peritoneum is, it's like a pillowcase over the, the lower, you know, over the intestines to kind of hold it together and keep it in shape. And then you have your, you have like four layers. You know, you have your peritoneum, then you have your greater omentum, and, you know, and then on the, on the most superficial, then you would have your four layers of abdominal mus muscles, which the deepest one is the transverse abdominus, and then your external and internal obliques, and then the rectus abdominus. And I want to remind you guys that this is what holds our guts in, you know, your mus muscular, you know, um, the four layers, and the rectus abdominus is the only one that's straight up and down, right down the middle. Rectus means straight up and down the middle. External obliques is like you're putting your hands in your pocket, and then internal obliques go the opposite ways. They form a mesh. And then the transverse abdominus is the deepest muscle, and it holds everything in, you know. So, and they don't go all the way to the middle. They only, you know, go up to about right here, you know, right, right next to the rectus, at the edge of the rectus abdominus, the lateral side. And then the rest of it is the aponeurosis over that you know so an aponeurosis remember means flat sheet tendon i'm that i'm sorry i just think it's important for us as therapists to know that you know so i'll show you right now how we need to work the digestive system so we have the greater and lesser om omentum which is a membrane in front of the organs and the intestines and the greater omentum is like a little apron oh i should have brought an apron in 
I have an apron, but I, you know, I, I didn't uh, bring it in. But the greater momentum is like, you know, right on this lower part, you know, kind of to keep things, you know, nice and tight. You know, the peritoneum keeps the organ, I mean, the, yeah, the small intestine, large intestine from moving around too much. And then the lesser one is over the, uh, over the liver and the pancreas. So that's, remember, they come in layers. I, I just happen to have that handy because I went for a walk this morning. Uh, the retroperitoneal space is behind the peritoneum and it contains the pancreas, kidneys, and part of the uh, intestines. So that's behind. Retro means behind. Okay, so the oral cavity contains the teeth, the tongue, the salivary glands. Masticate means chewing when you're masticating. And you know, we're supposed to chew a lot, you know, because it breaks down food and we have the glands there. And digestion begins in the mouth because you start secreting, you know, enzymes to break down the food. Bolus is a ball. Bolus means the ball of food that you make. You know, before you swallow, you, you chew a little bit. And before you swallow, you have this ball. And that's called the bolus when it goes from the mouth down the, you know, the, the, um, down to the esophagus and the stomach. Okay, you have salivary secretions, which are amylase and lingual lip, lipase. And you have three, you know, salivary glands. I think I already mentioned them. The submandibular, sublingual, and then the parotid, which is the largest. Okay. Deglutition is the act of swallowing. So when you're swallowing, it's called deglutition. And it's, and it's the bolus that you're swallowing. You know, it's like you get it nice and moist and broken down. It forms a little ball. And then you're able to swallow it. And then it goes down to the esophagus, okay? It transports uh, foods, liquids from the pharynx to the stomach, you know, and it goes down through the esophagus. So let's talk about the stomach. The stomach is like a J-shaped organ. And it really, what it does is, it, you know, it kind of breaks down the food. You know, it's, a, uh, it's got the pyloric sphincter between the stomach and the small intestine. It expands. The, the stomach is really kind of small. And, it, you know, when it's empty, it doesn't hold very much. You know, it's, it's, it looks small. But it can hold up to a gallon of food when it's stretched. It looks like, as a matter of fact, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I posted a picture of the stomach. And, it, it, you know, this is uh, like the menudo, for those of you that speak Spanish, the tripe from the cow. That's what it looks like. It expands. So um, once the bolus is in your stomach and it starts breaking it down by enzymes, it turns into chyme. Chyme is all that mushy stuff that's taken the apple apart. It broke the apple apart with all the enzymes. So the stomach's job is to turn and move and propulse. It, it, you know, it uh, has certain movements to break down, you know, the... Um, the apple the, or the steak or the hamburger that you ate, whatever you ate, you know, it breaks it down by gastric juices and by, you know, a little bit of movement. And so the, some of the secretions in their stomach are pepsin, hydrochloric acid, which, you know, hydrochloric acid is very strong and powerful. It can burn a hole through a carpet. It kills a lot of the bacteria that, you know, can get into our stomach. So it aids in digestion, uh, kills pathogens, bacteria. Um, it also has intrinsic factor and a system B vitamins B12 absorption. It also the stomach also produces gastrin, uh, hormone stimulating secretions, and mucus by the globlet cells. You know to break it down. So it turns slimy, but it's called chyme. And once it goes from the stomach and it's ready to go into the small intestine. It goes into the first part of the uh, small intestine and the and the duodenum. And the small intestine is actually, even though it's called a small intestine, it's called a lot small intestine because it's diameter. It's smaller than the large, the, the large intestine has a bigger diameter than the small intestine. 
However, the small intestine is up to 20 feet and it's all nicely tucked and folded there in the middle, okay? Whereas the large intestine is only five feet long. So anyway, it's 90% um, of the absorption happens in the small intestine. That's where it takes out all the nutrients to take it back into your bloodstream. And I'll, I want to really talk about that a little bit. Um, it goes from to the duodenum, which is also has the ducts to the liver, to the gallbladder, and the pancreas. The liver produces um, bile, okay, and it's stored in the gallbladder. The gallbladder does not produce the bile. It's the liver, and then it's stored in the gallbladder. And so the secretions go into the du duodenum, which is only like 10 to 12 inches. So it's once it's in the stomach, then it goes to the, that part of the small intestine and then to the jejunum and then the ileum, which is uh, the fast and the longest. And it, Oh, it also contains the pears patches in the uh, ileum where the, that's part of the um, lymphatic system for, you know, for our immune system. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about the small intestine. The small intestine has villi and the little small finger-like projections that contain are full of blood capillaries, okay? They contain the capillaries, they contain, you know, uh, some nerve endings. And this is uh, what absorbs all the nutrients from the small intestine. So the microvilli villi are, are, and also it looks smooth like velvet, you know, just they're little like little finger likes, like little succulents. And, and, you know, they're all in our small intestine where the digestion happens. And I wanted to tell you that, you know, I've learned through my studies since, you know, I, I really like to talk about this. Um, now they say it's not what you can eat. You can eat really healthy food. But if your small intestine is really coated with gunk and years of bad food, it, it's not going to let you absorb. Those little villi are so, so small that if they are covered over and, you know, with sluggish material because you don't eat enough fiber or you don't eat enough fruit or vegetables to kind of clean all that out, it's going to stick in there and clog, clog all that up. So then comes the point that, you're not absorbing the nutrients. You may be eating healthy, maybe, but, you know, after a certain many amount of years of eating junk, because most of us kind of junk it up when we're young. So it's very important for you to um, do some research. Do some of your own research. Question everything I say. I always say I'm not offended. I don't know it all. So you guys research that, that now they say we are not just what we eat. We are what we can absorb. And if you can't absorb good nutrients because your small intestine is so clogged and you've damaged the little villi, you know, in your, you know, where the capillaries exchange the nutrients or get the nutrients out, you know, through uh, osmosis, they're, they're, the, the little villi, you know, uh, absorb the capillaries absorb all the nutrients and then it takes it to your bloodstream and then your bloodstream the circulatory system takes it to every single organ so all the all the nutrients are absorbed in the small intestine 90 percent of them are absorbed in the small intestine 80 percent of the alcohol is absorbed in the small intestine whereas 20 percent is absorbed in the stomach but very small absorption happens in the stomach and sublingual too you, really there's no absorption in the mouth except for unless you do sublingual some sublingual medications but other than that, it's in the small intestine, so take care of your small intestine. And, you know, that's why they say sometimes, you know, cleanses, cleanses are good. And I leave that up to you guys to do your research and see if you want to do, you know, some, some of that. So now let's talk about, um, oh, let me see. Yeah, the uh, alcohol is 20% absorbed in the stomach and some calcium and magnesium is absorbed in the stomach. But glucose, fats, amino acids, fat soluble, vitamins, water soluble, vitamin sodium, vitamin B12, alcohol, water and bile. 
is all absorbed in the small intestine. And the only absorption in the large intestine is water and acids and gases. The, um, the large intestine reabsorbs, you know, it's liquid and mushy in the small intestine. So the job of the large intestine is to take out that water. Once it leaves the small intestine, guess what? It becomes, you know, fecal matter. So, you know, it, 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 it starts forming fecal matter by reabsorbing the water out of it. So it takes the water. That's the job of the large intestine, to take the water out of it. And if you have not been drinking enough water, and then your large intestine goes in there and tries to take the water out, that's when a lot of people get constipated. You know, and also remember that your large intestine is a muscle. And a lot of people that are constipated, they take uh, laxatives and it makes your muscle, if you take them over a long period of time, it really does make your muscles lazy. Just kind of like when you start, stop working out and you lay around a lot, like what we've been doing, you know, through this uh, lockdown, we we're being lazy, you know, sometimes we're not exercising as much because we can't go outside. Well, our muscles start losing, you know, their, their muscle tone. Well, so does your large intestine. So try not to take, you know, for those of you that do take, um, uh, what I just said, the laxatives, try not to because it makes your colon lazy. You know, instead, eat a lot of fiber, eat good nutrients, drink a lot of water, exercise. That's another one that stimulates your colon is exercise. Don't depend on that coffee because coffee is a stimulant. Stimulant. So, um, water, the, wa the job of the large intestine is to absorb water, electrolytes, vitamin K production. It secretes mucus. Whenever you have diarrhea is because it didn't have time long enough. It didn't spend enough time in the large intestine. The large intestine, the, it, the, it moved through too fast. So now you have diarrhea because if, if it would take its time, you know, it takes time to go through the large intestine, then you would uh, be able to reabsorb all the, all the water. And the large intestine has like little pouches, you know, I don't know if I don't have a picture, but it's got the hostra and, and it's like, well, maybe you can see it here. Let me see. I don't know if you can see it here, but these are the hostra, each little segment. So this would be the, you know, the ascending colon, transverse colon, and descending colon. Okay, and I'm going to show you how, you know, you would work that on a client, especially if they are, you know, having maybe a little bit of constipation, then you can go ahead and, you know, work out this muscle. You know, so remember we're talking about the right and left side of your client. Anatomical position is always referring to the client. So the ascending colon goes up the right side, transverse across, and then it comes down on the left side. So when you're working on somebody, you always want to go, you, you know, you always want to go clockwise. You want to go the way that the, the, uh, the colon goes, the way it moves. You don't want to go against it. So when you're coming down here on the left side, you want to push down, you know, a little bit more on the left side because this eliminates and this absorbs the nutrients from the small intestine. It goes through you know, up the this is where the small intestine ends and the large intestine begins on the right side. And every organ in your body has um, an opening and an end, you know, one that absorbs and receives and the other one where it, it eliminates, you know. So when you're working on somebody that needs some abdominal work, remember to always go clockwise and you might come down here, you know, down the uh, rectus abdominis too. But keep that in mind. I always like to give you tips on how to work on people because that is what we do. That's the only reason we learn all this stuff is to be able to help our clients and, you know, suggest to them that they drink enough water so that, you, especially if they're constipated and not to get dependent on those laxatives, guys, because I've seen, you know, um, some people that have done a lot of damage to their muscle because, like I mentioned before, it's smooth muscle and you want to exercise it. 
So now let's talk about the accessory organs, which is the liver, the gallbladder, and the pancreas. And the liver is our largest organ. It weighs anywhere from three to four pounds. It's quite large. My mouth is really dry today. And it lies on the right side. And um, it has over 500 functions. One of them that relates to the digestive system is produces bile. And bile is what gives the color to your feces. It's, it's green and yellowish. And then it turns your, your feces brown. And, and the reason it does that is because the liver receives all the uh, dead red blood cells and, you know, recycles them through the liver. And so that's one of the reasons why our feces, you know, is brown. So that comes, the color comes from the bile you know, and the gallbladder just stores it. So really the, um, the liver, it, it, you know, it filters medications. That's why it's so, they tell you, you know, like Tylenol, don't take a lot of Tylenol, especially when you're drinking because it really damages your liver because your liver filters, like I said, your liver has over 500, you know, around 500 functions. So it's not just bile production, but, you know, uh, filters medications and gets rid of dead blood cells from, you know, that come from the, uh, the spleen and everything. So, okay, so let's get on to the next one. Okay, so it produces and metabolizes proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, produce plasma proteins, it stores nutrients, it detoxifies certain harmful chemicals, excretes substances produces bile and produces defenses i always get ahead of myself sorry <laughs> so we have the hepatic portal system and this transports blood from the gi tract to the spe spleen the gallbladder and the pancreas to the liver what this means is that you remember hepa hepatic means liver hepatic portal system is that that the that it has its own blood supply just like the heart the heart has its own blood supply. You know, when you have a heart attack, it's it's the blood supply to the heart itself, to the, the arteries from that go directly, you know, to the heart. It has its own blood supply. So does the liver, you know. And the um, biliary tract is the trans where it transports bile to the gallbladder to into the duodenum, which is the small intestine. Uh, we talked about the bile. The gallbladder is a pear-shaped sac located inferior and surface of the liver. It produces, uh, oh, produced by the liver. Oh, and the gallbladder also has rugae. Rugae is the folds that help it expand, just like your, you know, your bladder, your stomach, you know, it's like it's smaller, you know, and then once it gets full, it can get bigger. The pancreas now, the pancreas is an interesting uh, uh, organ because it's also an endocrine gland. So it's an endocrine gland, part of the endocrine system because it produces hormones, but it also produces hormones that are needed for digestion. So it's, it's both. It's a gland located posterior to the stomach and, you know, so it's a gland, okay? It's, it's considered a gland. It secretes enzymes that break down all categories of digestible food. It contains alpha and beta cells, um, glucagon and insulin. Those are hormones that are needed, you know, for us to digest. Acini uh, cells secrete digestive enzymes. And also the pancreatic duct is in the duo empties into the duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestine. So, so you know, now you can see how it all works together. The, the digestive system is just amazing because it gets all the nutrients. You know, like our brain takes 20% of, you know, the, the sugars, the sucrose, you know, the uh, carbs, it, you know, because it, we use our brain so much and it really requires a lot of energy. And all of that comes through the digestive system. So the pancreas produces trypsinogen, chymotrypsin, pancreatic amylase, pancreatic lipase. And amylase, most of us remember that it's for carbohydrate um, digestion. And lipase, anytime you hear lipase, has to do with lipids with fats. 
Okay. Oh, and it looks like a flat fish. That's, that's another thing. It looks like a flat. It look, to me, it looks like a tongue. I don't know. You guys decide. Tell me, tell me. I want to I wanna engage you guys. You know, it's so difficult to teach when there's no audience in, in the classroom. I try to engage my, my students quite a bit. But this is the pancreas. And it, it's flat, and it says, you know, it looks like a, like a fish. But to me, it, you know, I don't know. It looks like a tongue to me. <laughs> okay, so I think we're almost done, but let's see. Yeah, so I wanted to, you know, to talk uh, a little bit about the digestive system and how now we have to be really careful because... Illness really does begin in, in, in the colon. So we really have to take care of our colon. We have to eat healthy. We have to flush it. We have to have enough, you know, water. And, you know, it's very important for us to have a good bio, you know, a biodome in, in, our, in our gut. You know, we have good bacteria and bad bacteria. And I know most of you already know about probiotics. And there's such a thing as prebiotics because the pro if you're going to get a probiotic, you need to make sure that you have a probiotic that has prebiotics because it has to go through your stomach, through your small intestine, and all the way down to your gut where, you know, where the good and bad bacteria are. So, you know, after it gets through the um, hydrochloric acid and all those digestive enzymes, it's, it's gone, it's dead by the time it gets down below. And you want to have a higher concentration of good bacteria than bad bacteria. Because if it's the other way around, guess what? If you have more bad bacteria and less good bacteria, then there's an off balance. And if, you know, if you're exposed to, let's say, you know, something going around, bacterial, something, you know, an illness or something like that, and there, you, you have very low, you know, good bacteria, then it's not going to combat, you know, more than likely you might get sick. So you want to balance that out a little bit and have a little bit more of higher good bacteria. And one of the ways that you can increase that is obviously, you know, I said, this is just a suggestion. You do your own research, but you can take good probiotics or one of the things that they suggest now, I mean, that I, not that they suggest now, we've always known this, but um, sour, anything that's fermented, sauerkraut, uh, sour, uh, sauerkraut, pickled beets, anything that's pickled, but it must be pickled in vinegar, not in salt, because then that just raises your blood pressure. So anything that's pickled, if you eat a lot of sauerkraut or a lot of, my son likes kimchi and, you know, uh, just... Uh, Different, you know, things that really are good for your gut. You know, jalap uh, jalapenos, I think, is one of them. And olives is another one. So, you know, yogurt has a little bit, but it's got to be the good yogurt. You know, um, a lot of it is, is not as high. A lot of it just has sugars and gelatin added. So do your research as to what has good natural probiotics that you could eat. And that'll you know, raise your level of probiotics and good bacteria because you want to keep that, you know, it's a whole city. Remember I talked about the cell and the cell review, how it's its own microcosm. It can survive by itself and it's everything you need in there. Well, you know, your gut is the same way. You know, it's like a, a biodome, like from the forest, you know, where you have the rain and there's a perfect balance of the bigger animals eating the smaller animals. And I, 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 you know, I mean, that's nature, guys. I don't mean to, but it, you know, it keeps everything flowing. You know, you need the water. You need, you know, the recycle of life. You you need that good balance in you. And like I mentioned to you guys, Ellen, we are a walking miracle. Our digestive system does a really good job of breaking things down. You know, it takes that apple or that steak or that hamburger, breaks it down in the stomach, sends it to the small intestine where it reabsorbs where it absorbs all the nutrients it goes through the large intestine it gets rid of whatever it doesn't need you know in fecal matter you get rid of it and then yet it takes it through your bloodstream and takes it to every organ so take care of you know maybe now it's time to start thinking you know what affects your digestive system stress is a big one you know that's why 
digestion happens with the parasympathetic system, the rest and digest. That's why it's called rest and digest. If you're upset and you're eating, you're going to get heartburn, ulcers. So start thinking, start putting two and two together. You know, every system has its complement. And now, you know, maybe, well, I haven't talked too much in my Tai Chi videos about that, but, you know, I do talk a lot in the Tai Chi videos about the yin yang and every organ has a yin yang. Every organ has a yin and a yang. And, you know, every organ serves a purpose and they work together, you know, and some are opposite, you know, working uh, together with opposite energies. So take care of your digestive system, watch what you eat. Uh, sleep is also very important, affects your digestive system. Stress, sleep, good water, you know, water intake. And one of the things that, you know, that I recommend is you take your body weight in half in water. So I weigh 120 pounds, which I've gained like two or three since we've been out on lockdown. So I weigh 120 pounds. So I need to take, you know, um, 60 ounces of water every day, you know, just to keep my body. Remember, we're like 70% water and so of our cells and our plasma you know our plasma is really high in water too so you want to make sure and keep a balance watch you know get rid of the sugary drinks you know to me i rather drink water and have uh something more to eat than you know fill myself with sugary drinks or even juices juices are really high and in, in water and it's not the same i can tell you and it's not the same to drink apple juice, apple juice or eat an apple. And I'll tell you why. See, nature is so smart. And think about this. The apple juice, they take all the fiber out of it. You're just getting the juice and getting the sugar. The apple itself has fiber in it. And it helps with absorption of the sugars. So you're way better off eating an apple than drinking some juice. And it takes a lot of juice, a lot of apples to, you know, to make, let's say, let's say eight ounces of, of, of apple juice. Think of how many apples takes to, to get that apple juice. It probably takes like maybe 10 apples. Do you ever sit down and drink 10, 10 apples at once? Most of us don't. Most of us don't. So you're getting all the sugar from 10 apples in that eight ounces of, of apple juice, where if you eat two apples, it comes with other things like the the fiber and another thing that's very important is for you guys to eat about 25 to 30 you know grams of fiber you know fiber every day it's very important and i got news for you lettuce is not fiber you think oh you know you're gonna eat a lot of lettuce no do your research find out which are some of the foods that are high in fiber Another thing I wanted to talk to you, I know I keep going on, it's because this is my favorite system. So I want to talk about, you know, elimination and, you know, poop. And I know it's uncomfortable and I make my students squirm away in the classroom, you know, because I do go into a little bit more detail than I will go in here. But once uh, poop goes into the rectum, which is the lower part, the, the end of the large intestine and rectum means straight so it's straight ready to be eliminated you have two sphincters okay sphincter is nothing more than a muscle you know it's it's a it's a muscular you know uh circular muscle that allows the um the feces to go into the rectum and it fills up and then the last one is the one that you feel like when you have to go use the bathroom you should be having, you know, every time we masticate and we start chewing, it stimulates digestion, okay? It takes about three to four hours for all that food to go through your system. So when you're chewing and you feel like you have to go to the bathroom, it's not because it already digested the hamburger and french fries that you're eating. No, it's stimulating what you ate the meal before. So we really should, when you have a really good, digestive system and you eat healthy you should be elimin eliminating every time that you eat you know that you eat a big meal and most of us don't as a matter of fact a lot of people sometimes don't even go to the bathroom for three or four days and they you know that's normal for them and you know that's like i said that's not really you know the way it's supposed to be but sometimes people have issues so watch for that uh also you know a healthy 
poop is, you know, should be the, the shape, the shape of your colon, you know, like in an S shape. And if it's really heavy with cheese and meats and all that, it sinks all the way to the bottom of the toilet. You know, that's when it's too heavy. You're eating too much heavy foods, not enough fiber, not enough, um, you know, apples and broccoli and all the good stuff. So I know this is kind of gross, guys, but you got to look at it. You got to figure out what's coming. You, you know, we always look at what we're ingesting. Ooh, that, and, and I'm the same way. You know, I actually have been craving like, God, I wish I could eat a big fat hamburger, you know, with cheese and French fries and all of that, you know, and it looks good and appealing nachos. All of that looks appealing, but we don't want to look at the outcome. But I think we need to look at the outcome, you know, to see, make sure that you have a good digestive, you know, system. So I know I like to talk and this is my favorite. This is one of my favorites. I like them all really. They're all so important. So I hope this review has helped you. And uh, if you have any comments, please, please leave me comments because that motivates me. You know, right now I don't have my students in front of me. I'm not, I don't have my clients. So I need some motivation, guys, you know, to keep me going, to keep doing these reviews for you. So I don't know which one I'll do next. I'm just picking them as I, you know, as I want to do them. So I'll do another review next Wednesday. Stay tuned. Leave me comments. Subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. Check out my store at massagetherapeutics.com. And um, you guys have a great week. Till the next time, create a great day.